morning everybody um just to say um, a couple of bits at the beginning before i pass you over to anna our guest speaker um so welcome and um, welcome to our webinar um instagram strategy for beginners i hope i'm going to learn something i'm sure <laughs> just like everyone else is anna um so yeah i just wanted to kind of take this opportunity to um talk to everybody just before as i say i pass on to anna um here at Ottersford, we've got a team of three of us. There's myself, um, Andy and Sarah, who make up the business support team. So that's us there. Um, obviously, you can contact us either via the website or email or obviously come meet us if you'd like to. Give us a phone call. Uh, lots of different ways of getting in touch with us. Um, but if you need any kind of signposting to business support or advice or business finance, kind of we're your people. Um, we have recently done our website. So we've got lots of new content on there. So hopefully it's a bit easier to navigate um, than the older one. On, just with lots of info again on events that are going on and um, any grants that we've got available um, kind of support services and kind of ways to work with the council so yeah take a look and um, obviously get in touch if there is anything you'd like to, to ask us or we can help with um, as I say the new websites it looks a bit like this um, so yeah it, uh, it's all been redone recently so do take a look um, and see if you can find anything that might be helpful and um, a couple of bits to mention um, that are part of our Startup September, which is what this webinar series is part of as well. Um, we're offering business coaching, all fully funded and free um, to anybody living in Ottlesford. So if you would be interested in some um, business coaching, the way this is going to work is uh, there's three different groups. There's women in business, which I think has got one space available in that group. We've got I came with a business and left I came with an idea left with the business so very early startups and then how to build your business that one I know has got a couple of spaces the one above the came with an idea left with the business has got quite a few spaces still left so if you would like to apply for that then please do and um, the way it's going to work is kind of group sessions so that you'll um, have a little network of of people like-minded kind of business entrepreneurs um, and then a business coach and you'll talk through anything you kind of want to talk about in terms of support or what you know starting your business you might have questions um, and just a way of kind of getting you together um, and having a bit of a session with them and then you also get two hours one-to-one -one, um, private session with the business coach it's a great opportunity if it's something you'd be interested in then please do um, give us a give us a shout there is uh, details of how to apply on the website so take a look at that um, we've also got a startup grant um, which is available to er, to startups and early stage businesses so any business that's been trading for up to two years can apply so again take a look at the website for eligibility criteria and how you can apply for that um, we've redone um, the startup guide recently and that is available to um, to download off the website so please take a look uh, again at the website and see if you would like to download that lots of useful information just about kind of setting up websites and how the Council can help you that kind of thing um, also on the website sorry keep going on about the website um, is our highlight your business uh, business directory so mm. we felt really strongly that we wanted to have a place where businesses can put their web their um, business in a huge directory um, alongside others and hopefully that will give you the opportunity to either be seen by other businesses to maybe collaborate or residents that want to come and find a business so we're it's in its early stages there's about 50 or 60 businesses on there at the moment but obviously we're, you're all more than welcome to um, add your business to the directory so just take a look at um at that um i think this is the last thing or i mean there's two more things uh, before i pass over to anna we've got business breakfast next thursday at no the novotel at london stansted um we are running three workshops one um about video content so it kind of leads on from what anna's going to be talking about today but it's about creating that video content for your um, instagram or other social um, channels there's also going to be a workshop about um the business support that's available to you in ottlesford and society sustainability and kind of looking at net zero in relation to your business and then also about business finance options um, to grow your business so please do come along for that to that it's a complimentary breakfast um, and yeah you'll get a chance to kind of network and and speak to other business owners um, and industry experts that are going to be there as well We've got some exhibitors coming along uh, last thing to say is just that we have a business newsletter that goes out we try and send it out every other week um, please do sign up for that it's a great way of keeping in touch and up to date with everything that's going on um, so if you can sign up for that please do um, so yeah that is kind of all from me. Um, I will now pass you over to our guest speaker. Thank you ever so much, Anna, for agreeing to do this. And um, I'm hoping you are going to teach us lots and lots <laughs> about Instagram. So I'll pass you over to Anna. Um, welcome and welcome to everybody that's joined while I've been chatting away. Um, I'll just say 
that if you do want to contact me, then I'll put the details at the end um, of the of the webinar. But I'm passing over to Anna now to to take it away. Thanks, Anna. Thank you. I just want to say what an amazing opportunity you have to have all of this. It's absolutely amazing. Well done, Rachel, for doing this. And <laughs> thank you. Team. So and um, thank you for having me here. No worries. So, my name is Anna Bonasera and I'm here to help you steal my strategy for Instagram. And we're really talking about beginners here. So if you have no experience with Instagram at all or you're just not consistent with it, then this is kind of like the best place to start to get yourself accountable and just get going um if you go to the next slide please so um just before we get started just explain who on earth am i um so my name is Anna Sarah and i'm a mum to four boys who have neurodiverse needs and also a baby girl who is four months old so this is my first workshop back so please be kind to me <laughs> since having um baby Neela. so um i have been working specifically within confidence coaching for around the past 10 years um and i about three years ago i really wanted to start working with helping small business owners get visible using video and Instagram is a place that I believe is one of the best forms to be using um, for us businesses to get out there for what they have to offer um, and especially the short form video content so I specifically focus on helping people with real so my business is called Real Badass Solutions um, and yeah so I studied I studied film at A-level and I went to drama school to have a little bit of experience but what I really want to talk to you guys about first is to kind of help you make your profile as best as possible. So I've got a little checklist here of things we're going to go through today. And we're going to go through what each bit step by step. So hopefully you can either during, make notes or even do it along at the same time if you have your phone at hand um, and actually make the most out of your profile. Because at the end of the day, this is like your online shop. This is where the people land. So whenever they find you, whether it's for a recommendation, a search, a reel, a post, a share, they're going to end up on your profile. So we really need to make sure that it is up to scratch. It is doing, it is selling for us. It is telling people why they should follow you and why should they should come in on into your community. So we'd like to go to the next slide. So first of all, we're going to talk about profile picture. And this is probably quite an obvious one and maybe something that you already are top notch at, but I just want to discuss because a lot of people can get this wrong. So this is the the thing that people are going to see first of you if you are commenting on another person's social media post and they see your little circle they are going to not want to see your dog probably not your kids unless you're a ch children's business um and they want to make sure that you know we, we want to attract them so we want to make sure that it stands out so we don't want to have all the blurry stuff or a you know as far in the landscape you want to have something that is really super clear so these are things that maybe you don't want to use and on the next slide this is just me I just try and have as clear as possible a headshot of you or if you are not the, the face of your brand then use your logo and make sure it's really instinctive like obviously the apple logo is black and white stands out a lot so what, you know, just really make the most of being recognisable. And that is what we want. We want to be able to people to see us and remember us if they have are coming across it a second time or to make them go, oh, why are we going to look at this? Next is your bio. OK, and this is quite an in-depth thing to do. Um, and you might just want to spend some time brainstorming. Um, I've got like a five minute th thing towards in a few size time, but we probably won't have time for that today, but I would definitely take some notes now. So when looking at your bio on your um, on your Instagram, it is necessarily, some people, what they do is put a description of what it is they do, rather than focusing on how it is that you can help. So I like to kind of break it down into four different sentences to really help your ideal clients understand why they should follow you and what you can do for them. So on the next slide, there is the four different points that I'm talking about. So the first kind of like two lines, you want to show them like, you want to, to make them aware of what kind of thing that they're struggling with. So a pain point, their customer pain point. So from what I've put is teaching you how to make reels. 
really simple because that's what I'm doing. Um, I never like to put making reels easy because I think that nothing's easy in life and we all struggle with different things. So simple is what I do, but teaching you how to make reels. Then the next line is all about how I'm going to help. So I'm going to um, show you that it's only going to take a couple of minutes. So those two lines come like how are you going to help and what the customer pain point are. So those those are the first kind of two things that are going to grab your ideal client's attention. Just kind of really think about what it is that your product or service really helps your ideal client with and what's the outcome of that. You know, a lot of people don't like to necessarily focus on the pain points. Maybe you want to focus on the end transformation, which is absolutely fine. But that's kind of the idea of what you want to go with to really pull them into your world. Um, and then I'm going to help them achieve a goal because I'm going to maximize their visibility, which is what we all need, isn't it? We need to be visible. We want more leads. We want to get our business out there so eventually we can have more sales. And then I've got a call to action at the bottom. So you get 20 real ideas to your inbox. So whatever it is that you have for free. So whether it's like 10% off if you sign up to your email list or, you know, you've got maybe you've got, just got a new collection you, you want people to see or join a wait list or maybe a free group. You want kind of to draw them into your world a little bit more. Um, if you go to the next slide, um, just some questions that might help you. Um, as a business owner, you've probably done a lot of work on ideal client, but it's really, really important to have that at the forefront of your mind when you're writing things like this and really thinking, how is it going to stand out? So think about what does your ideal client want but and what do they need, which is very different because they probably want something and you know they actually need another layer. So like people want to have reels done for you, for example, but they probably don't have the cash flow to have a social media manager so what do they need and said they need a really simple easy way to actually make them um what goals do they have so what are they trying to achieve you know if you think about your business if it's like a seasonal business for example you know we're coming up to christmas we're coming up you know only got a few months left of this year so what is it that you can help them with to achieve that goal and then and then what have you got for, on offer maybe it is like a paid thing like I said maybe you've got a new course out you want people to have a look at maybe you've got um, a new service out um so what have you got whether it's free or paid give them that call to action a CTA telling them to do something to click the link in your bio because if you don't give them that call to action they probably won't go and look at it it's nothing to do with what content you have but we need to ask them to do stuff because sometimes our brains get a bit lazy and we just forget that we can actually do these things and we scroll on by. So definitely always use a good call to action. OK, so your link that is directly below the bio. So that's why we have the call to action there, because it's the perfect space to then point in the direction of whatever it is we have to sell or on offer. So you could have a website there. If you have a website, you could have a lead magnet, your free group, you could have your paid offer um, and you can have multiple links. So now Instagram is actually enabling you to use multiple links. However, um, I don't think it looks the prettiest. If I'm if I'm all honest, I think it looks a bit. A bit chaotic. So if you wanted something a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, there is the Linktree website, which a lot of people have used. If you are somebody who is quite techie, um, you could just make a page on your website and um, just have all the links listed really simply, really easy for people to take in and digest. Um, so we want to make the customer journey as easy as possible. Um, but Linktree is a really good feature that you could use for free if you are not techie and it just has all the links there ready to go so that you can give your clients whatever it is that they want. Next slide. OK, so your highlights. So these are really important. OK, um, as you can see, I've got two examples here. And if you look on my Instagram, you will see the circles. Now, that is your highlights. Now, these contain different stories that I have made in the past and I have saved them each to these highlights. Now, you don't necessarily have to have them, but they are a great 
place for people who land on your profile to then go and have a look and learn more about you. So, you know, it's great to have, obviously, we've got a whole Instagram feed, but it's almost like it could be a bit overwhelming. Whereas when you've got your highlights, you specifically picked these stories that you've done in the past for people to do. You could literally have an idea of start here and you could like tell your your business journey you could you know explain how you got to where you are and um, then um, if you go to the next slide Rachel there's some ideas of different highlights should be there we go so you can have testimonials so that's a great way of um building that um showing that you are a person of expertise show that social proof that's the word I was looking for that social proof that people have worked with you they like what you've got and why people should then go and buy from you as well. Um, and you could get a bit more personal about you, um, you could tell specific client stories, you could save one for like if you had a pro having a product launch um, or a service launch, for example, that you kind of did once a year, then it's something that people could come back to and see what's happened previous years and kind of like how it's grown. Um, and then a top tips. So, you know, giving all that good, juicy, valuable content that um, people then see you as a person of authority in your field. OK, next slide. So pinned posts. So these are really important as well. Um, you can have a different pinned post um, up to three on your main feed, which is literally where people land and then on your real feed so when you click on the little um like play button in the middle that brings up just all of your reels so it won't have any posts on there it'll just be the reels and you can have different pinned posts there to the ones on your main home feed as well um this is really great because if you've got specific reels like you want to sh show people or post you want to show people you want them to start there again it's making that customer journey really easily um, and there are, I think on the next slide, there's some different ideas of what you could have as pin posts. So I, mine is like an introduction to who I am, how people can work with me. And then um, I can't remember what the third one is off the top of my head, but um, they're really, it's, it's stuff that I want people to see first and then they can go in and binge all the rest of my content if they, if they want to, that is. So hopefully I'm, I'm selling myself to be a person of value that they want to come and follow and learn more from. Um, and that's the position that you want to put yourself in as a business owner as well. Next slide, please. So now we're getting more into the strategy. So hopefully that little checklist has helped you kind of get a bit more clear on that. Um, but this is what I call the simple way that you can just get started and start being consistent. Now, a lot of people say like, oh, I can't be consistent on Instagram. Um, I really struggle. But the point of consistency isn't to show up every single day. The point of being consistent is to pick a schedule that you can actually feel capable to stick to. So if you know you can show up twice a week, commit to that. If you know you can show up four times a week, brilliant, do that too but pick what is actually manageable so that you are going to be there so that your followers know, oh, okay, you know, this is the content that's coming out this week. She's doing, going to do two posts just so that you are, you are there. You are a presence on Instagram. Now I'm going to delve more into this in a minute, but this is the basics of what I would suggest. Okay. Now, if you're somebody who um, in the chat, actually, if you don't mind, if you I would love you just to put if you you use Instagram or if you do not um, at all. So if you if you are into it or you're in the middle, just a level of Instagram. How do you do? Oh no, sorry, Jill, but thank you for being here. I think it. I think it is being recorded. Yeah, cool, Rachel. It is. Yeah, we'll share it. Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah, Sarah uses brilliant. Um. Yeah, basic level feed through from Facebook. Yeah, yeah, use it linked to Facebook. Cool, just started. Oh, fabulous, well done, Nikki. Um, use it once a week. Cool, brilliant, that's the thing. If you can stick to once a week, then do once a week. That's what I really suggest. So I'm a big believer in working smarter and not harder. So 
this is the kind of strategy that I suggest starting with if you can commit to it. Now, stories might look overwhelming because there is something in there every day. You don't necessarily have to do every, something every day. These are just the ideas that I've given you. We're going to go delve into those a little bit more in a minute. Um, but this is what I suggest. OK, so on a Monday, I'm just making this off the top of my head. So if you don't, if you're busy on a Monday, then don't follow this system. Pick what days work for you. This is what we're going with, just as an example. So on a Monday, we're going to have an engagement story. I'll talk more about what each level kind of thing means. And then we're going to post on our grid, either like a single post or a carousel, which is several pictures or in graphics that you've made on Canva, etc. cetera, um, on a Monday. Now, on Tuesday, we're going to post about our freebie on our stories. On a Wednesday, we're going to make a sale post on stories because you can put links on there. We want to you know, put our offers out there so we can get some, some actual money coming into our business. Um, on a Thursday, we're just going to share something and then that something could be your reel. Um, we're going to also make a reel on a Thursday. Now, the idea of this is that the content we put on the Monday post, we're going to take that content and we're just going to turn it into a reel. So we're talking about the same topic. We're repeating ourselves, but we're putting it in a completely different format. Now, a lot of people worry about repeating themselves and that people are going to get bored of them. I promise you that the people who, what, who read your post on the Monday are very unlikely to also see your reel on the Thursday and vice versa. They probably might see them both, but they won't see them within the same week. They'll probably see them within the day. A different mindset and people take things in in different ways like I've got obviously five children they don't all learn in the same format as I'm sure I don't to Rachel and be the rest of you guys so you some people will prefer to read the post some people will be really against reels because it's too much change other people will love reels because they much prefer the the video content coming in so what you really need to think of is can I save myself time? Yes, then let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. So post at the beginning of the week, then turn it into a reel. Again, you could flip it if you want to start with a reel and then with a post, whatever works for you. But this is what I suggest you do. If you can only take that little bit of time just to get consistency and build that up on Instagram, this is what I would suggest you do. Then on a Friday, do a bit of entertainment. Nobody wants anything too serious on a Friday. And then on Saturday and Sunday, if you do want to post, just share a bit about your life. If you're going for a walk, share a little picture of walking the dog. If you're, you know, going out for dinner, you know, just a bit of behind the scenes. People love to be nosy, which is why stories are so amazing because they love to see behind the scenes. They love a bit of, you know, what's going on behind the brand. Like if you are not the face of your brand, that's absolutely fine. You don't necessarily have to put your face in stories. You don't have to necessarily put your face in reels. Do the insights say that having your face in everything works better? Yes, but that doesn't mean that it's impossible. Okay. Um, to use the next slide, we're just going to talk a bit about stories. OK, so engagement. Um, I'm going to attempt to show you on my phone. Where to find them, but it might not work because I'm going to be little. Um, so when you have taken a story, it's going to take a little selfie so we can use when you have taken it. Oh, look, it's me. Um, if you flip up you then are going to get lots and lots of stickers. So there's lots of different ways that you can then engage with your audience. Um, the best and the easiest one by far is using a poll. Now, these are great for market research um, as well as just engaging with your audience. Um, so you could literally use them as like, have you had a good weekend? Yes, no, maybe, or like make it a bit more fun if you want to. It doesn't need to be anything like too out there. Um, um, or you could ask a question like, oh, I'm, you know, stuck for colours to use for um, the wall in my, in my office. What do you think? Pink, purple or sparkles, whatever it is. Do you know what I mean? So just asking people's opinion, getting them to engage um, and in the easiest way, format possible there are other ones you can use like sliders or like laughing faces and change the emojis and stuff and um, but things like that are 
great to use because store stories are um where you really build your community on instagram like if you're big facebook users like i used to be in the past um i was very much about building community in a facebook group and it's very very different building community on facebook to building a community on instagram you want to you you are the only person who's engaging with your with your audience there isn't a group of people who can also help form that community it's just down to you which does it make a little bit harder in some ways possibly but does it make it a lot more personal absolutely yes indeed um so get them engaging in the simplest format you possibly can so your freebie so as i showed you just then about the when you swipe up you have the stickers or there's a little emoji with the little smiley face and um, you can also add a link sticker so you cannot have a link on your Instagram posts or reels. You can only have the link in your bio or the link in your um, in your stories. Now, if you use Instagram, you, you might think that's really basic, but you, you'd be surprised how many of my clients actually ask me to put a link in the comments or on the post. And I have to explain, no, we didn't do that on Instagram. Um, why? I don't know, can't answer that. But um, yeah, so it's all in the, um, in link in the story or link in your bio they're the only places you can which is why it's great to build that community on the stories so then you can also sell at a more personal level too sales so literally whatever sale what have you, whatever you've got to sell don't be afraid to share it just think about maybe how you're sharing it so think about that transformation you know really pull on the the issues that people might be having that you can actually solve tell a little story, share clients' testimonials or or their or just their personal transformation that you've helped create, um, obviously with their permission, um, and sh share your links out there as well. Um, sharing. So I normally like to share the same post, well, the same account every day, which is was called Moon Omens. I don't know why, but it's not on Instagram anymore. So I'm having to try and find another one. But it's just a little cute thing that is something I'm interested in um, and by sharing it actually a lot of other people who follow me have then come and had discussions with me and said oh yeah I actually really you know enjoy learning more about the moon and how it affects us you know it's probably not something that you're interested in but there are other things you can so like for example um, talking about being a mother of children with um, neurodiverse needs is something I talk about being a carer um, and other people who follow me are then also people who have children with neurodiverse needs and are carers and then we have a conversation about that and it's just about building that no like and trust sharing a bit about me being a little bit vulnerable to the level that I'm comfortable helps to build that connection with my audience um, but obviously you just need to be as deep as that as well it can literally be like if you like crystals sharing about crystals if you like sports sharing about sports stuff like that um, but just sharing a reel or a post from somebody else so that's content you've got out there to your audience but you don't actually have to make it <laughs> um, and also you can share past posts that you've created too entertainment so again this could be something that you're sharing um you, you can also use memes on your instagram stories and um, there's lots of different things that you can do to share and just entertain again have a bit of a um giggle with your audience um and then your life I know a lot of people don't like to show all of their life, which is absolutely fine. I think the internet has definitely changed since 2014 when we were literally posting what we were eating for every meal. Um, but I would definitely share a little bit of behind the scenes and um, let them into your world because like I said, people are so nosy and they just absolutely love to see what you are up to. And the longer we can get them watching our stuff, the better our engagement rates are gonna be. <laughs> So Instagram stories are at the top here. They have their own feed, okay? This is really, really important because it means if you're making stories, so the, all these people who have posted will have posted recently. Now, if they don't post for the next three hours, their stories are gonna get pushed along and new people are gonna come up the front because they'll have post sooner. So if you, for example, were just posting, you don't have to post three times a day, but I'm just saying like, morning noon and night for example you're then going to appear at the beginning of that feed those three times so you're going to be more relevant for example because you're going to be 
constantly on their on their mind and people are watching. So they are of a maximum of 60 seconds now. Um, and they expire after 24 hours, which I think to some people is music to their ears. So if you really don't like showing your face or talking on camera, I suggest practicing on your Instagram reels because when you wake up the next day and have a cringe moment, they're probably gone before you have time to delete them. So definitely if you, so that's something you struggle with, get, it, get, get started by getting on Instagram and using stories. Um, and like I was saying before, they are a great way to build that community. Ideally, what you want is you want to be posting content that people then send you DMs and you can have a little conversation with that's completely probably not even relevant to your business, but it's just going to build that connection with your audience and turn it really from an audience into more of a loyal community or a loyal following. Next slide, please. Um, so the feed going back now to our main Instagram feed. So the idea is like I was saying before, it's just keep it simple. If all you can manage is to do one post a week and you can't manage the reel, that's absolutely fine. Alternate, do a post one week, do a reel the next. But what I would suggest is um, don't, just, just don't overcomplicate. There are so many people out there now talking about reels, I know that. And obviously I am one of those people, but I think what we tend to do is we listen to all the free content we can take in and then we try and do everything from everyone or little bits from everyone and we don't actually get anywhere. So what I would really suggest is, is to really, you know, like if you're going to stick with this strategy, do it for 30 days, do it for 60 days and really give it a good run before you start something else or before you add something else in, you know, just give your brain the chance to get used to being on Instagram, especially because I used to be all Facebook and hate Instagram. And the thing that really got me loving Instagram is using stories every single day. So if you're somebody who really just can't gel with it, that is what I said would suggest doing is just try to be consistent and don't overwhelm yourself. Next slide, we're just going to talk a bit about reels. So a reel is a short form video. Now, the settings are 15 to 90 seconds. However, I suggest having even shorter than 15 seconds. So they're just the amount of times that you can record in. Um, but literally, you could film, like I've just, earlier on when we were talking, I propped my phone up and recorded myself. Now, probably not today, but another day, I will use that video and I will just layer some text over the top of a five second part of that video. And um, the text is gonna be relevant to my ideal client. I'm gonna be teaching them something probably, mostly about reels. Um, and then I'm gonna put it out there with a bit of trending music. Like it, you do not need to overcomplicate reels. Like you don't need to dance. You don't even need to point or even have your face on there if you don't want to. You take a picture of you from behind typing on a computer or, you know, setting up your, um, your workstation if you're working in as a therapist or whatever it is that you do don't feel like you have to be all singing and dancing just really keep it simple um, they have a high reach sorry go back to that sorry Rachel um, reels have an amazingly high reach and they they are basically the hook that brings people in they are what's going to show they're going to show you to many and then a few of them are going to decide they want to watch you and come and and come and follow you. And then they're going to, through stories, hopefully, become a loyal raving fan of yours and then hopefully turn them into uh, buying from you as well. Right, next slide. So the difference between stories and first reels, because people don't sometimes get confused, like, why should you use both? Like I was just saying, like the real is the hook that gets people in. Like they're gonna be shown to lots and lots of different people. Probably some of them are not gonna be your ideal client. Most people are going to probably scroll through. You've probably got less than three seconds for somebody watching your reel to decide whether or not they want to continue watching and scroll past. So that is what we really need to make stand out and um, have a range of being specific in reels about your ideal client and then maybe some more that are like, open and like not as specific um and then your stories is where you're really talking directly to your follower not saying like hey guys but more like hey how are you doing really love your opinion on this or 
you know, this is ha- what could really help you. You know, you're really being that, that personal on your stories. Um, and you don't need to talk as well. You can like just write the stuff down and stuff, but just for example. So they are what's really going to help you to bring in the audience and then to nurture the audience is what the, re- the stories are doing. Okay. So um, we're going to go to some questions in a minute, but I just thought I'd run through some stuff that I do if you really want to focus on doing Instagram and you would like to work with me. I know I'm not everyone's cup of tea, by the way, don't worry. Um, I am offering some Instagram audits at the minute for £47. They are usually £97. So if you do all the work that we just did about bio and stuff and then you want me to like properly go over it, look at your reels and kind of give you some pointers of of what we can do to really attract our ideal clients even more, um, then please do so. And uh, oh, the, sorry, the middle one didn't change. That's not supposed to say that. I was supposed to say I have social media marketing packages. If you do have the budget to have what like proper somebody do it for you, just don't have the time to do it, then um, do let me know. I have some packages. I have about two spots available for people at the minute. Um, and then I have accountability membership, which is called the Five Minute Real Club. So on the next slide, I will give you seven trending sounds every single week um, that I research for you. So you don't have to waste time scrolling and getting lost in the scroll hole. Um, and I'll also give you content ideas with hooks and call to actions to really help attract that ideal client and um, we're going to be having a monthly accountability zoom call which is something new I'm bringing to the membership so literally we're going to come together we're going to make a reel and then we're going to do some engagement together so we're going to set timers we're going to do um we're going to help give you ideas of following up with people and commenting and connecting with your audience um, you also will have access to canva templates so if you're somebody who really doesn't have time to film or just doesn't have the phone capacity sometimes people don't um, you can literally edit the Canva templates we've got and use them on reels and then we also have a private community as well and I come live every week and make a reel so if you don't know what you're doing I can literally show you step by step um, and that is $24.99 a month um, if my website is not working on some people's phones some people's it's working and some people's it's not so if you can't get through to it then do go and find me over on Instagram and just DM me the word club and I will send you the full details for that um, if you'd like to know more so um, now I think we have some time for some questions because I know Rachel was saying there's probably going to be lots so if you want to type questions or you want to unmute yourself and ask um please do go ahead um and I can help in any way I can I think someone's typing (laughs) thanks Anna I think a big one is content as well so if you have like a business and you're just like I don't know how I would use reels or stories for my business um then do feel free to apps yeah so lucy anyone can see your reels i mean you could make them just you could probably make them private or just no if you've got an open instagram if your instagram is public then i'm pretty sure everyone can see them i don't think there's a setting you can just do to your followers currently um i think they are creating where you can make a post specifically to your close friends list so on instagram you can have a close friends list so you can just send these so for example if you had like some vip clients you could maybe have like that list and then you want to send something specific out to them you could do um is facebook not any use anymore (laughs) that's my favorite question ever um i use it less and less personally I don't know about you guys, whether how you're using it. Um, I don't think I really hardly ever post on my profile. I do have a group, which is a little bit quiet at the minute because I've just obviously just had a baby. So I've not been focusing on that. I've been really just keeping my Instagram going. Um, But the reach on Facebook is hard. They're trying to put reels on there, which is has not been very successful it's been over a year now and they haven't really changed much it's very hit and miss when you post um 
a reel on Instagram to whether or not it decides to transfer over to Facebook um, on the accounts that I do manage. Some ones will have Facebook statistics of how well they've done that month. Others won't have posted to, it, to Facebook at all. So um, it's, yeah, very difficult. I was going to say, Anna, what I've heard on various things I've been on recently and kind of the, the word on the street is that I suppose it depends who your customer base is and what they're using. And one of the things I would advise um, is look at who your audience is and what social media platform they're using. You know, if it is Instagram and if they are your audience, then yes, use that. But if they're not and they are more on Facebook, then obviously you can engage more on there. I think someone's just kind of said that. Um, but yeah, it, it really depends on what your audience is. But I think um, I think you're right. I think Facebook has lost its way in terms of the video side of things. But I think certain generations and I'm not just stereotyping here but I think they there are certain generations that still use Facebook and aren't on Instagram yet and if they're your target audience then great still use Facebook I guess but um, yeah. I was just going to say Anna one of the questions that kind of linked to Lucy um, mm -hmm. as first question because she said about everybody seeing your reels she then said but only your followers can see your stories so she was just clarifying that so your stories if, if somebody who isn't following you comes onto your page, they can watch your stories. Yeah. Your stories can really only be found by your followers. So they can see the stories, but they won't, like, you won't appear in the story feed unless they're following you, if that makes sense. Um, but, yeah, you, and they do say if you use tags, like, as in, like, location tags and... Um, like if you're at a, if you've got like a specific residence like a, a shop or whatever um that and in a specific town that you can be found through those tags but I don't know of how successful that really is whether anybody searches for those yeah yeah um and then I'll come back to Sarah's question just in a minute Sarah sorry um Nikki asked about what about posts are they worth doing so obviously you mentioned doing one a week um and concentrating more on your stories is that kind of what you would suggest I think if you're only going to have time to do one piece of content a week and you you are comfortable doing reels I would do a reel over a post but I do think that posts still have their place as well especially carousels if you're somebody who can use Canva and um, edit the templates that they've got if you're not techie and just write out like if you've got like five top tips on how to dress for autumn and you've got can use five slides for that people do love an infographic absolutely um and then you like I said you put those five top 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 tips then into a reel okay, um, cool. so I still think they have their place people learn differently okay um two questions before I go back to Sarah so any advice for legal family service as a solicitor what could you do and how to deal with security it's quite tricky I suppose Oh gosh um I mean I I know of legal um I had a lady who did one of my challenges actually and she was um deal, dealt with legal stuff and she didn't even know why it went viral but it went pretty it, she literally just sat in her car talking about I think it was like a procedure I can't remember exactly the video I'll have to try and find it but she literally was talking about how things work like because I think there's a lot of like questions isn't there like in like you know, if you if somebody's coming to you and they need your services, they might not understand how it works. So you could just talk about the process of what it is you, you go through. Rather um, than specific clients. Yeah. 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 yeah OK. Exactly. Um, and Nikki just says, how um, can you explain how hashtags work? So there's a big debate at the minute with hashtags, whether or not they actually work anymore, whether they're worth using. I personally do still use them. Um, I don't use the full 30 anymore, which is what people tend used to do. Um, and I put them at the bottom of my caption, not in the comments. I think it looks a bit untidy in the comments, which, I, which is what I used to do. Um, so I put between seven and 10 hashtags um, and I tend to do a range of them. So I will do some that are like really niche specific to what I talk about, like reels, content, small business, being a mum business, such stuff like that, um, that have got less people using them. So when you type in a hashtag on Instagram, search for it, you can see how many times it's been used. So I tend to use some that have got like less usage. 
so they're not as saturated and then I will use a few that are more saturated and then I will also use a few that are specific to where I live now even though I can do um this anywhere um I'm obviously a person from Oxfordshire something I've got in common with people so it's going to be a bit, bit of a connection instantly so I do use some more specific locations location. cool um so going back to Sarah's question she's asked could you talk us through making a reel I could if you want to take me um I might have to can can we come off of the yeah the I can end stop sharing see if this works otherwise you probably just won't see the thing so can everybody now see Anna in large <laughs> that's kind of what I'm hoping <laughs> <Am> I large? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she's large she's <laughs> large okay I'm tiny but I'm hoping that you guys can all see me um up close so when you are on your Instagram you can get to reels a couple of ways now the easiest way is swiping across you're then going to come up with so I've got to then you're going to come up with at the bottom it should say stories real live and then at the beginning of the post as well so post story real live so it gives you the options to click on the bottom what it is you want to create in terms of content so that's how to make story and then if you want to do the real you can then click on the real um, and then you can either shoot from the camera there or if you slide up just going to check yeah I've got no weird pictures of children um my children um <laughs> then you've got all of your camera roll there and you can literally select whatever it is you want if you've got albums um you can just go through and look at them so I'm just going to take this little bit of video Come on, let me turn my volume down so this is a little bit of video I took earlier and I was talking to Rachel. Um, and then what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to, at the bottom, they tend to use this bar system. So you can see like, this is all the frames of my video and you can see the white bar then makes it smaller. So I'm just going to take like a five second chunk. That's all I'm going to take. And then I'm going to press next. So then you've got, a very raw video of me talking. Now, you, this could be anything. You could literally take a picture of the sky and use this. You could take a picture of you know you working on behind the scenes on a project, packing a package, etc. Um, but literally, a five seven second video is going to be a very easy thing to do and very effective. Okay, so you could then go up to the little um, icon with the music. And click on the music. Now, um, Instagram changes things all the time. So it used to have like a list of, of what's highest. Now it just it kind of has a list of different music it might think you like, um, and it's got some arrows next to it, and it actually will tell you how many times it's been used. So the ones with the arrows are the ones that are generally trending. Okay. Now it's very different to have a trending sound that has been used 150,000 times to having a trending sound that's been used 5,000 times, for example. Now they both might work in their own way, um, but um, if you find one that you like and it's lower, then I definitely say it would say you've got a better chance using that and getting pushed out into the algorithm a bit more. So uh, I'm gonna use this hustling sound is at the top so that's playing over the top I'll do and then um, I'm going to go to the AA which is your text so now with text what I always say is really important is to choose a font or two that you are going to stick to and show up with the same time every single time because we want to be remembered by people because they might not follow us the first time especially if we have, haven't used a call to action to say follow us they probably will scroll on by even if they like your content so when we show up the next time we want them to remember oh yeah that's Anna she gave great real advice last time oh yeah I'll stay and watch her content um, and then um, and pick your colours as well so all of my colours are pink and purple um, so just using your brand colours to make you more memorable so I'm just going to type um, 
using a strong hook at the top because I don't want to take it all the time thinking of a random hook. So I put that right at the top, nice and large for people to see. So I'm giving them a reason to stop scrolling and watch. Um, then I'm going to type out option one, option two, option three, and I'll show you how to make a text appear and disappear. So option one. So I'm putting these on a different text. So this is my second font that I like to use. So I'm just having that placed there and then I'm going to create like a list. But they are different texts. So they're not just, I'm not just putting a space on a new line, for example. So they are completely separate from one another, which is important. I'll show you in a minute why. So this is me like giving my different tips, for example. And I'm going to show you how to make them appear. So now Instagram likes to roll out new features to people at different times. So you might not have the way this layout is. Um, I think most, most of my accounts I manage do now. So hopefully you do. Um, but what you want to do then is at the bottom, you'll see that there are little bubbles of the text. So I'm just going to click on them and then it's going to bring up this little editing suite. OK, now it looks a bit scary, maybe, but it is a lot easier to use once you get your head around it. So um, in purple, are all my different text boxes and I'm going to drag them to where I want them to show up. So remember I was saying there's like this bar system that they use again, it's the same. The purple bar and the yellow is kind of like the frame of where they come in and out. So I want my hook there at the top the whole time. So I'm not going to touch that one. Then I'm going to come to option one. I want that to come out at a different time. I want it to come out a bit delayed. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag that that way. Now the next one is option two and that I want that to come out after option one. So again, I'm just going to drag it a bit further so you can see it's kind of like going in a bit of a, I don't know what you say that, a downward, a slope. Um, and there you go. So my option one, my option two, my option three, they're coming out at different times. So then when I press play, you'll see that they pop up on the screen at different times. Obviously, I probably would go over that and be a bit more picky about when they come out, the beat of the song or whatever. But as simply as possible, that is then drip feeding into our reel. Now, it's a really great idea to do the drip feed kind of method because it's keeping people watching till the end. Also, because it's only a short time, um, they're going to um, probably have to rewatch it because you've not really given them enough time to watch it, which doubles your views, which is great. Um, what you could do if you are um, somebody who writes um, a lot of text out, what I would suggest doing is writing a paragraph. So I'm just going to delete that text. So I'm just going to do a bit of a copy and paste and make a little tool, um, a little paragraph to show you how to use this. Oh gosh, sorry, one sec. Oh God, I've done that. There you go. Right, paste. OK, so I've just done a paragraph that says hello in it a million times. Um, so you might want to have like a paragraph of text on the screen, probably a bit longer than that. Um, so because our video is only five seconds long and we've got this paragraph of text that people are going to stop and watch because it's really interesting for our ideal client what we've got to say. Again, it's going to take them longer than one time to watch it. So you don't even have to fiddle about with starting to when things come or not you really want to keep it as simply as possible i would suggest doing something like this having the text just on the screen displayed and um, so then they can and i would also add another text box at the bottom as a call to action comment if you agree share with your friends follow for more stuff like that and then what you do is you just press next and then you get to this part, you can click on here to um, edit and see what frame you want it to come in. And then you can also go to profile grid and kind of see what selection you want. If you're somebody who likes using Canva or has a 
if you have an aesthetic feed, you can upload a, a photo there to show and um, to keep in line with your stuff. Um, and you can tag products and everything, etc., like you would on a normal post there too. I hope that made sense. That did. Thanks, Anna. I hope that was helpful to everybody. It was to me because I was trying to follow you, but yeah, it did. It worked. It's all good. Well, honestly, thank you. You've been brilliant, Anna. And um, I, there aren't any more questions, but if there are any more following this, then you can either email myself or contact Anna directly um, yeah. and just kind of let us know if you've got any questions. As I say, we're always on hand um, at the business support team um, to help and kind of signpost you in the right direction. Anna is obviously available for you to use if you'd like to. Um, I obviously want to really thank Anna for coming along I think she's been brilliant um, I really hope you found it useful everybody um, and yeah thank you ever so much for joining us everybody and yeah please do get in touch if you want um, any info from Anna or from myself thanks so much for having me lovely to thanks, meet you guys bye bye everyone